Hello everyone. Today I'll be speaking about uh, uh, the biliary strictures and tissue sampling. Uh, as we all know, the ERCP pictures, the fluoroscopy images are not diagnostic and they may suggest uh, the etiology, but we depend on the tissue for the exact etiology as uh, the fluoroscopy images may look similar. In this example, the left side image is, su is suggestive of a stricture, but the etiology is cholangiocarcinoma and on right side, the similar looking stricture turned out to be tuberculosis and both the uh, diseases have different uh, treatment. So that is why it is important for us to get proper tissue. Pre presently, the conventional tissue sampling is frequently inconclusive and there is repeated investigations which are invasive in nature, which leads to delayed implementation of appropriate care, which leads to cost escalation and there is patient and physician frustration. Even those patients who are operated for a stricture, one-fourth may turn out to be benign and could have been easily managed by endoscopic method. That is why we are looking for an ideal endoscopic sampling technique which gives us the high sensitivity uh, with few false negatives and perfect specificity with no false positive. So, uh, these are the uh, demands which are unmet and present scenario we have seen that the breast cytology and intraductal biopsies have very uh, small or very, very low sensitivity uh, ranging from 45 percent to 48 percent and even, even combination gives us a sensitivity of around 59 percent. Uh, we are looking for, uh, for some of the improvement in brushing technique and we have a novel infinity sampling device, the breast cytology uh, uh, technique uh, introduced by Steris. And we recently will present a case which we recently did and we'll uh, talk about the procedure in this video. Uh, at the outset, I thank Steris for giving us this opportunity. Today we'll be demonstrating a case of ERCP. He's 81 year old male with multiple comorbidities. He has presented to us with jaundice. He has weight loss of uh, around 6 kg in last one month time. Uh, he's, uh, he's anemic. His hemoglobin is 9.8. The bilirubinum is uh, 10 milligram percentage with uh, normal uh, transaminases. Alkaline phosphatase is raised uh, 260 with uh, tumor marker of 60. Uh, so, plan is to, to uh, ERCP and this is the MRCP picture which is showing a stricture involving the uh, hyalur region. Uh, so we will go ahead and do ERCP. Uh, aim is to show the conventional method of tissue sampling which is very important to establish the diagnosis. Yes, so we got into the bile duct now. <clears throat> so we'll push the sphincterotome up and try to negotiate the wire across this stricture. And as you can see, we have gone into the left hepatic duct. Gram from the left deep intrahepatic duct, and you can see now this is a very dilated left hepatic duct and as we are coming down, keep on injecting please, yes, so we can see there is a tight stricture over there, and now we have defined the stricture, it is involving the confluence, so we will do a sphincterotomy. Now we have done enough sphincterotomy. So now uh, our aim is to take the tissue sampling. So we use uh, brush cytology uh, technique first and I will demonstrate how we do it using uh, uh, rapid on-site evaluation by uh, our pathologist, uh, Dr. Anuradha is there with us. So. Uh, First of all, I'll show the uh, the 
the brush and if you can see this brush this is a very important uh, technology improvement where we can see the type of brush here there are two dark bristles on the either end and then there are the white color uh, brushes in between so this dark color brush are stiff they once you we do a to and fro motion in the stricture it causes slight trauma to that stricture and the cells are released which are again uh, deposited between the two bristles and within this soft bristles uh, uh, and then this cytology can be taken not only that we also have a mechanism where this white handle can be removed along with the wire and then once uh, our brush cytology is done we rinse this a sheath with the cytol cytology solution to get all the cells which are uh, deposited in this sheath uh, the radiological marker there this is the marker on the sheath uh, so we'll park this end of the sheath here and then we'll uh, do the brushing from here so we'll start doing brushing you can see now the brush comes out uh, there is a small radio pick marker on the uh, top of the brush also so we'll do 5 uh, to 6 uh, motions over there and once we have done uh, enough uh, to and fro motions we bring we bring the brush inside the sheath and remove this brush uh, from the channel of the scope and then i'll give this to dr anuradha who is senior pathologist at our institute she will demonstrate how she takes out the sample from this uh, brushings hi everyone now the most important step is to transfer the material which we have got uh, from the brush onto the slide so in the first pass we will transfer the material onto the slide to prepare the conventional brush uh, technique so smear the material onto the brush and then fix it immediately into the uh, fixator so you can make two to three slides ensure that the entire brush gets in contact with the slide and then in two and fro movements rub it onto the slide and any leftover material or particle we will directly take it into a fixator and then we'll go on to the second pass so with the similar technique we'll take a second pass and as you can see the passability is very smooth once you have done adequate sphincter trotomy this Uh, brush can be passed easily right up till to the as i showed the marker should be at the distal end of the stricture and then we'll start doing brushing again 1 yes so once we have done adequate brushing 
we remove we bring in the brush into the sheath and then again remove this for optimal retrieval of the cytology material in the second pass we will directly drop all the material into the cytolite fixative you can see and then we will rinse rinse the brush into the fixative so that any particles which are stuck to the brush will be directly rinsed and so you can use any blade cutter to detach the blade and the brush and so drop the the cut end of the brush into the fixative so we will allow this to stand for some time so that whatever particles are attached in between the white and the black part of the brushes will get fixed into the cytolite fixative and this we can process as a cell block and we can do ancillary uh, tests now <coughs> so the next step is now we will detach the brush along with the guide wire so you can see once we remove the handle with the guide wire the next step will be to flush air and you can see that whatever uh, material is there in the brush it gets expelled and it should be directly collected within the cytolite fixative so that it can get fixed along with the material uh, which was attached to the brush which is already there in the fixative so this will help us to salvage as much as material as possible from the brush for optimal uh, cytological processing so hello everyone i hope you can see the uh, image of the cytosmears so this is a scanner view showing the very good cellularity which we have got from the uh, brush cytology as you can see there are many uh, disordered sheets in clusters of uh, cells i'll go on to the next magnification to focus on the high power of these cells so this is the low power magnification showing the loss of honeycombing and as we go on to the next higher magnification you can see that there is lot of discohesion of the cells there is uh, clustering and clumping of the cells and you have a sinar pattern of uh, arrangement and you have uh, cell ball like clusters i'm just scanning so that you can see the adequate cellularity of these cells in total uh, absence of the benign ductal epithelial cells we'll just go on to the next higher magnification to see the nuclear details in higher magnification so as you can uh, appreciate here there is um, moderate to marked anisonucleosis there is overlapping of the cells single cells overlapping nuclei and here you have a very nice asinar pattern of uh, arrangement marked discohesion so i'll just show one large cluster of cells so you can see the increased cellularity and let's just view this in the higher magnification so you can see that there is nuclear overlap and crowding and asinar pattern of arrangement so all this uh, fits into a neoplastic etiology so this brush is positive for malignancy and morphology is that of um, adenocarcinoma cholangiocarcinoma thank you so we saw that uh, with the uh, pathologist available in our uh, endoscopy room and a better sampling device improves the yield of uh, brush cytology not only that we may also do the uh, biopsies uh, the fluoroscopic guided biopsies and and steris has introduced a histo guide biopsy forceps which allows us to take a good specimen and similar to the press cytology sampling we can also use 
uh, rapid onset evaluation by a pathologist in the room by preparing a smash protocol or tissue imprint cytology and the uh, pathologist in the room can tell us about the adequacy of the smen, specimen and this smash protocol ensures the tissue adequacy and it increases the probability of diagnosis. In this series, the positive smash was seen in 72 percent and that is our experience also with the biopsy obtained by these uh, intrabiliary forceps uh, increases the yield also. So with this, I'll end my talk and happy to participate in the discussions. Thank you very much.